and let's start with a geometry package developed by its authors and they're going to give a talk, Anshul, Skyler and uh, Raphael. Shout out to them and let's start. <laughs> Okay, can you guys hear me? Is the mic on? Yep. yep. All right, good morning, everyone. So thank you for coming so uh, early this morning on our last day of JuliaCon. So today we're going to tell you about a package we've been working on called Geometry Ops, which does geospatial operations in Julia. And so uh, your first question with that might be, what are geospatial operations, especially if you're not super uh, in the geometry ecosystem yet? Uh, and these are operations involving geospatial objects. That's not much more descriptive, but basically that means things like polygons, lines, points, some of these shapes that we have up on the slide. Uh, and the operations can mean a lot of things. Things where we take in geospatial objects and output values like area or centroid. Things where we take multiple geospatial objects together and output a new one like union, difference, or intersection. Or where we change a single geospatial object such as simplifying it or finding uh, something called its convex hull. So these are really important for a huge range of problems. Um, but how do we do them in Julia? What does the ecosystem look like? And uh, honestly, it's a very <laughs> varied ecosystem. But there's sort of two camps of packages just due to somewhat the um, newness of Julia. And that's sort of wrappers of big existing packages in other languages, for example, uh, C, C++, uh, or in some cases, uh, smaller packages that are implementing one or two or three features as users need them. And so uh, this is a small subset of the packages in the Julia geometry ecosystem. That's our super cool logo. Uh, and these fall into some of the camps that I was talking about, about either being non-native or pretty limited. And actually, some of the blue ones I've put up here haven't had commits for like minimum of two years. So it really is on a per user basis in a lot of cases. And so what do we really want? Well, we want to build on the strength of a lot of these packages that people have been building, really use the manpower of people in the Julia community who are already working on these things, and build one package with enough methods and interoperability to build a real community of users and developers for the good of the ecosystem. And so we're really hoping that that will be geometry ops, and that it'll be a really flexible package that'll perform a really large range of these geospatial operations that I was talking about earlier. And this is sort of our group of people who have worked on the package so far, uh, and we're really putting a lot of time and effort into building it as quickly as possible. Um, and so I'm gonna start off by telling you uh, why should you use geometry ops? And like I mentioned, uh, this is really actively developed. We're pushing basically weekly at this point. Um, it's fully native. And we're really focusing on flexibility and modularity to make it easy to add new algorithms, new functionality, whatever you might need, which Anshul is going to build on. And we're trying to avoid things that come with working with things like C uh, or things that aren't really built in a really Julian way, like seg faults, type instability, and really rigid algorithm choices. Um, but I won't say it's all roses. Uh, why should you not use geometry ops? It, it's brand new, right? Uh, there are bugs. The geometry ecosystem still building cohesion. What is an empty geometry? Some really interesting questions we'd love to talk about. Um, but I'm going to pitch that this is actually why you should help us develop geometry ops. We need some polish to reach our full potential. So um, help us grow from this really awkward young child package you know, into this really strong unifying package we want to become. And I'm going to let Anshul give you some of the details. Right. So uh, is this working? Yes. Perfect. OK. So let's talk about the plan. So the plan was, you know, we need speed, right? We've got to go fast. This is Julia. And the idea was we, all of these industry standard packages have a lot of overhead. They're built for gigantic geometries, millions of points. And they've got a lot of caching, a lot of overhead. So we said, OK, let's, let's re-implement this stuff from the papers. We'll get the new algorithms. We'll minimize the overhead. And a lot of our needs were also for these really small polygons, right, in, in simulation and so on. And so that actually helped us quite a bit. Um, you can also group similar computations together. So when you're computing the centroid, you're doing a pass over uh, the polygon anyway. So you may as well compute the area. It's not that difficult. Um, you have to do it anyway. So we can return that as well. We provide generic algorithms and let users choose between them. So for example, let's say you're simplifying a geometry, right? You've got a geometry with a lot of points. You want to decrease the number of points, but still keep the general shape. There are multiple algorithms which do this. Um, in a lot of packages, you have to find the function name. There may be different arguments, and so on and so forth. 
In geometry ops, you just pass an algorithm struct. It's like the FQ. It's really simple. So the idea, and the idea is to also sort of lower the barrier to entry, right? Because if you're pushing an algorithm to one of these established libraries, you have to make sure it's better than anything else. With, with this ability to choose, you don't need to do that. It's an algorithm. It works for your use case. It works for this particular type of thing you want to do. Great. Push it. People can use it. So to create the solution, we need flexible frameworks to create these algorithms. And we've created this function called apply. Um, so the idea is that algorithm, uh, geometries are sort of like a tree structure, right? You've got on the top, let's say, a multi-polygon, which is a collection of polygons. Polygon is a connection of line strings or linear rings, which is a collection of points. And so this apply function basically walks through that tree for you and decomposes to whatever uh, level of, or on that tree you want to give it. So for example, you can go for points, you could go for line strings if you wanted, or linear rings, or polygons, and so on. And the beauty of this is that geom can be anything. It can be a geometry, vector of geometries, a table, some other data structure. As long, it's, it's extremely flexible. And in this case, we're just flipping the x and y coordinates, right? And this is all done generically via geointerface.jl. Um, so to give you an example of this sort of algorithm choice that we're talking about, uh, let's talk about geometry segmentization. So this is a, just a rectangle, um, sort of rotated around, right? And the blue rectangle, which is kind of overshadowed by the orange one, is what you would see if you just plotted that rectangle. And it's also what you see if you linearly interpolate along the line. So we, we initially defined the rectangle as 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. Right? So just these four points, which are sort of the minimum required definition. Um, but you can, you, can, you can use the segmentize function to interpolate along the lines. And if you just say segmentize, it'll give you a linear segmentization, right? linear interpolation. But if you pass this geodesic segment struct as the algorithm, it actually calls into a C library, which does computations on the ellipsoid. Uh, is the mic working? Yes? OK, perfect. Uh, it does computations on the ellipsoid. And you'll notice that in lot lang la longitude latitude space, this polygon is curved because it's on, this, it's on the ellipsoid. Right? It's pretty high on the ellipsoid. I think this is somewhere in the North Sea or something like this. So, so you can sort of get a perspective of where this is. Um, next slide. So as I said, give users a choice. You can choose lots of pre-processing, like what uh, Geos does, for example. And you can actually, there is an algorithm called Geos, which lets you call into the industry standard Geos library, which is in C. Um, you can choose no pre-processing if you want. And as I said, this lowers the, the barrier of entry for new algorithms, even if it doesn't work for everything, if it works for some things, and it's not so optimal for other things, you can still add it. Now, uh, benchmarks, of course. We're in Julia. We've got to have the benchmarks. Um, so this is the ex an example of that segmentized thing I was showing you. The blue line here is libgeos. That's a C library wrapper in Julia. Um, the green line, doing the exact same thing as libgeos, but in Julia. And so we get rid of a lot of that overhead that comes from A, the implementation of the C library, but B, also calling it to C. And then the beauty of the choice is we've got this super fast algorithm. If you want exactness, you can call this orange line, which is geodesic. It takes a, long, it takes a longer time, but it's sort of more exact and so on, right? So um, now again, talking about polygon operations, here's where we don't quite beat uh, C, which is orange here, and blue is geometry ops. Uh, this is comp computing area on just a circle. But you can see that we get rid of some of the overhead for really small polygons. As your computation becomes larger, you, uh, they sort of equalize. And here, uh, this is fun. So again, really small polygons. What's going on here, the blue is geometry ops, the uh, orange is libgeos. And sorry, how much time do I have? Two minutes. Oh, boy. Uh, blue, is geometry, uh, blue is geometry ops. Red is lib uh, orange is libgeos. And you can see that for small polygons on the order of 10 to the 1 points to about 100 points or so, um, you don't really need the caching that geos does. After that, you can see that geos' is caching really improves performance. And the beauty is, of course, you can choose either, depending on your use case. Um, so I think we'll forward through this for the sake of time. And this is actually a nice benchmark. So there's a in, in the geospatial sort of ecosystem, there's a cross-language benchmark repo called Vector Benchmark. And over here, I've just um, I've given each package a logo according to the logo of the language it's in. So you can see the little R's, the little snake for Python, right? And of course, Julia. And Geometry Ops is in green. All the other packages are different colors. Is this pretty visible, or should I sort of explain what's going on? 
Ah, uh, yes, it is in log scale. Uh, the median time per, per operation, it is in log scale. That's a good point. Um, and you can see that geometry ops is actually pretty fast. A lot of this is just decreasing overhead. A lot of this is the fact that Julia is fast, and we have all this nice type stability stuff. Um, even, re even reading and writing, for example, right? Load and write, that's j just done through GDAL for now, which is the geospatial data abstraction library. That's what everyone uses. But because Julia's C calls are so fast, Julia is actually faster than, the, uh, for example, the Terra library in R, which is also using the same underlying C library. So I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, <laughs> I, and I think we'll have to cut it there, but uh, if you are interested in developing on this library, we're trying to push, uh, we're getting to be some of the fastest in the ecosystem, and we would love any help if you're interested. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you.